Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Desk Storks, your favorite board game design and creation podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm the dork. And it's been a while. How are you? This is my face. If you'd forgotten what it's like, my beard looks a little bit longer. My head still looks bald. It's cool. So the other day, while we were putting up our usual stuff on RPG design, I got a comment about safety tools. Um, and it was, I don't know, a little derogatory towards safety tools uh, in a way that felt kind of flippant. And it got me thinking about why we use safety tools, and I thought what would be a better way to address uh, what I thought as a little bit of negativity and talk about why we use safety tools at all. Like, why bother, right? Um, RPGs are, after all, a work of fantasy, a work of fiction, a work of strange imagination, right? Like, does it really matter to have safety tools for real-world content in a game that is all about um, made up stuff. And the answer to that question, for those of you who don't want to watch the entire video, but I'll just sum it up like this is yes, ultimately, uh, they do. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying that we shouldn't make games about uncomfortable subject matter. I disagree with that sentiment off rip. I also think that anyone should be able to make any kind of game. Um, even ones that might, you know, dip into, uh, stuff that is beyond their own lived-in experience. I think that's okay, because I think how we gain empathy as people is by putting ourselves in the shoes of others and telling stories, and I think a game is a great way of doing that. What I don't think, though, is that we have to sacrifice our own out-of-game empathy to have those experiences, and ultimately, safety tools are a way for us to do that, right? It's all about empathy, and so... I wanted to talk a little bit about why I use safety tools, my experiences with them, and uh, yeah, I just want to have a chat, I guess, uh, so to speak. Um, yeah, let's let's just let's just jump right into it, shall we? Um, so the first reason that you want to have safety tools is ultimately it boils down to respect, right? R E S P E C T, baby. So of course I had to put the Queen of Soul on here. Um, sidebar: I saw Aretha Franklin in. Syracuse, New York. It was like one of her last shows and she came out in like a full sequin dress and like a whole band was just like, Central New York, it's your queen of soul. And I was like, oh, this is the greatest day of my life. And it, it was an incredible show. That lady had pipes, man. 75 years old or like 80. I forget how old she was when she played that show, but man, she was nuts. Anyway, it's all about respect. Um, I have safety tools present in all of my RPGs. Um, at least when I run them. Let me rephrase that. When I run an RPG, I have my safety tools present. Um, how many times have I had to use a safety tool thus far in my career has been in the single digits? That might sound shocking to you, right? Well, then, Kyle, if you don't use safety tools a lot, why bother having safety tools at all? And the answer to that question is respect. I don't know what my players are going through at any given point, right? I'm not sure where everyone is in their own walk of life or their own journey. And not everybody is capable of bringing their uh, concerns, their desires, their fears, the things they're insecure about uh, out front, right? Especially if this is a group that they are brand new to. And ultimately, if I have safety tools present... It's because I respect my players enough that if they need an out, I have given them one, right? That's why I have them. I don't use them often, but out of respect for the people that I play with, I have them present in my games, right? I have them present when I run them. If I could make one change to After the Rain, we didn't have a, a robust section on safety tools at the time. Uh, we were running out of page count, and I honestly, it slipped my mind. It wasn't even like it was a thing. I would have cut other content to put safety tools in there, and at the time, we, we couldn't put it back in. Like, it just financially, it was either we had to go back and ask for extra money to reprint stuff, or we just had to skip that. And it's like the one regret that I have about After the Rain. I wish we had a more robust section on safety tools. Um, and like we allude to some of them, but there wasn't like its own dedicated section. I wish I would have because I want players to feel respected when they play my games. There have been a couple really good examples of this, not in the RPGs that I run and in the uh, games that I just play with people. So Cards Against Humanity, whatever your own feelings on it are, 
uh, was a very popular party game for a very long time. My friend, who I played many of my games with, had lost her father to brain cancer. Uh, it was a loss that changed the trajectory of her life and the lives of her brothers entirely. It was it devastated their family. And so for her, even looking at the card, a brain tumor in Cards Against Humanity was awful. Now, there are two reactions to this. You could say, well, suck it up. It's a game. Who cares? Or I could choose to have basic respect for my friend, and we removed the card whenever she was around. And if she wasn't playing, we just put it back in. Who cares, right? Um, but I, there was a level of respect there. Those of you who watched my uh, It's Time to Stop series on taverns know that my favorite way to start a game, an RPG, is the funeral of a friend. I think it's a really brilliant way to begin a set of role-playing. But I always ask, hey... This is how I'm planning to start this campaign, whether it's a campaign of like Morkborg or Fleo or anything, right? If it's fantasy themed or I mean, honestly, even if it's after the rain, sometimes I like to start with the funeral, but I always ask, and I'm so glad I did. The one time I was going to start that campaign, one of my player's grandfather, who they were incredibly close with, had passed like not two days before the session, right? Again, you don't always need safety tools, but it's very important for you to have them. It is in, it is critical. It's critical for you to have them, even if it is just as a sign of respect, of mutual understanding for what we're trying to do here, uh, playing role-playing games. So we're going to move on to the next one. Um, it's also about comfort. So unlike a lot of games, I think role-playing is a much more deeply personal experience in a lot of ways, and... I like to think of my players as actors and as fellow writers and as just creatives. I think creative is probably the best term for it because they're not really writing. You've made the game in the scenario, but actors or creatives, I th think is a really great way of looking at it. And selfishly, you get the best uh, performance, quote unquote, from people when they feel comfortable, right? It's part of the reason that um, empathy, whether you're talking about in a professional setting or in a personal setting, is so critical. And by having safety tools in place, even if you don't use them, it sets this message that, oh, these are people that I can be comfortable with because they care about my feelings, my safety, my enjoyment of this experience, right? And again, uh, you know, there are definitely times where maybe you take it too far. There's always that meme of like that the person that walks up to the Dungeons and Dragons table or whatever. And they're like, hey, do you really want to join this? Like, we've been doing this the same way for whatever. And they're like, you didn't change this for me. But I think like, that's the exception. Not the, that's the exception that proves the rule. Right. Most of the time, like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time when you sit down and you put safety tools in place and people feel comfortable and included and like that they're cared about, like they matter, you're going to get a good performance out of them. And even if you want to just go beyond that, they're going to want to hang out. They're going to want to play. They're going to want to feel, they're going to want to be part of this community. And I'm not, when I say this community, I don't mean just your table or your game group, but I mean the RPG community as a whole. Um, I know so many people who have had horrible experiences their first couple of times playing RPGs and it set them back. They missed out on these stories and these games and these friendships they could have made because they weren't made to feel comfortable. They were made to feel unwanted at a table and that sucks. That's awful. That's, that's, that's horrendous. Like I don't, I don't want that. Right. Um, this past weekend was unpub. It's the unpublished board games convention that happens in, in Maryland every year. I really love that convention. It's one of my favorites. And I'm there with my friend Sue, and Sue has said multiple times, Kyle, I really want to play an RPG. Um, Sue is much older than me. Um, sorry, Sue, I'm throwing you under the bus here a little bit. But when she was growing up, she was growing up in the heyday, the gold, quote unquote, the golden age of D&D. &D. And when she tried to get into a game in the 70s, they said, girls don't play Dungeons and Dragons. And... Now, Sue is much older and has still never played a role-playing game because she wasn't made to feel comfortable. Um, like, those of you who have watched my content in any way, shape, or form, 
uh, probably know why I care about, um, like how much I care about like making this space open to everybody and open for everybody, how much I care about, like, I think inclusivity is the wrong word for it, but I just want, I want people to feel like they are a part of something when they're playing an RPG, no matter where they came from before they got to my table and it matters, right? Um, that's why we have, that's another reason why we have safety tools. It's the comfort. We want to bring comfort to the players. And last but certainly not least, it increases a sense of believability in, when I, in the game that you're crafting, the narrative that you're making. Now, that might seem really silly. Kyle, if I have to take time out because somebody flagged an X card, uh, or Kyle, if I have to take an hour out of my epic session to discuss lines and veils, um, that feels like it's going to take people out of it. But what you find is the exact opposite. If people are not worried about how is this game going to affect my real world mind state? Um, how is this game going to um, impact my, my real world emotional state? Then they are way more invested in what's going on. They're way more interested in the world that you're building, in the stuff that you're creating in the characters that you have uh, used to populate and bring life to the world that you have fashioned. That's, that's part of the reason that we do this is because we want to take the stress of the real world out as much as humanly possible. And again, part of being a game master is um, opening ourselves up to the possibility that although we have a great deal of control in the worlds that we make and in the worlds that we play in, we don't have a lot of control over what our players are experiencing outside of our community. And I would argue that it is our, op our opportunity and our responsibility as game masters to foster an environment where people can forget the troubles of the real world, if only for a short time, um, and come into this play space and to join us. And so if you are somebody on the fence about safety tools, I would argue or I would urge you, caution you, uh, counsel you, whatever, this. Consider for a moment like what being a game master means to you. Consider for a moment what being a, a creator of worlds and a guide of players means to you. And understand that even if you never use them, or if you know, there are potential issues that don't necessarily matter to you that you can still have these things in place. I think ultimately, and this is one balding dude's opinion, that being a game master is uh, an incredible honor. It's an incredible distinction. Uh, it's something that I've loved. It has defined who I am as a person in many ways. Obviously, it defines my business. And it's something I take really seriously. And if I take that seriously, then that means that I personally have to do as much as I can to make everybody feel welcome at my table. And safety tools are one small part of what I do and how I do that. Um, and if you are one of those people that says, ah, that seems silly and stupid, I would have you perhaps reconsider what your responsibility is to the people that you play with. And I think that's a pretty good place to end this video. Um, this was all unscripted, clearly. I hope it was of some enjoyment to you. If it has been, you can choose to give us the YouTube stuff. Um, it feels weird asking for that after a video like this. So, uh, yeah, but I, I have to, I guess. The almighty algorithm is what it is. Um, but yeah, do all the YouTube stuff. If you want to support us, you can... Get the games description below. World of Game Design has our stuff. Uh, you know, Mushwins is still ongoing if you want to do that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I feel like I got really passionate about this. So I hope I hope it's cool. I mean, I doubt anyone's watching at this, this stage of the video anyway. Usually, like, y'all are out by, like, three or four minutes in. So uh, in any case, um, thank you all. If you're all somehow still watching, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, consider... Consider using safety tools in your campaigns. That's pretty much it. Peace.